Hey, this is Rebecca Dirks with PremierGuitar.com. I'm here with Kenny Wayne Shepherd, and we're going to check out the guitars, amps, and effects you're using today. Yeah. Obviously, you've got your Strat here. You want to tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, this is one of my signature edition Strats, uh, the Artist Edition Kenny Wayne Shepherd Stratocaster. Uh, this is the one with the uh, silver racing stripes because, you know, I'm a big car guy as well. I'm, I'm into muscle cars. I collect them. And... Uh, so, you know, I kind of incorporated that theme into this guitar. Um, it has Kenny Wayne Shepherd uh, pickups in it that we custom voice. We worked, uh, you know, we developed them over the course of about a year and a half to try and get a particular sound out of them that I liked. Uh, it's got a 12 inch radius, so it's a rather flat uh, fretboard. Uh, it's Dunlop 6100 jumbo frets on it because I play big, thick, heavy strings with relatively high action, so the big frets are uh, instrumental in getting the right amount of grip to bend properly. Um, the neck's kind of tapered uh, as you go down towards the headstock. We put a gloss finish on the front. It's got a satin finish on the back because uh, it kind of makes you, you know, frees you up to move a little faster. Um, and, uh, you know, it's got the Graftec saddles on it, uh, which I've been using forever. Uh, virtually eliminates string breakage for me. If I break a string, it's usually because there's a flaw in the string itself nowadays. And then uh, we wired up the electronics so that uh, I can control the tone of every pickup, uh, including the bridge pickup, which a lot of times people leave that uh, you know, so that it's uh, just wide open. But I like to be able to roll back a little bit of high end when I'm using that. So these are all the features that are stock on a production model, too. Yeah, these are, yes, this is actually the production model. Well, this one, yes, this is a production version of my signature Strat. And uh, everything like that comes straight from the factory. Um, you know, so when you buy the guitar, you get all of those options. Um, and, you know, the thing is, is there's three different uh, appearances. So you got this one, we have a, a three-tone sunburst, and then we also have a white one with a beautiful cross that my wife uh, hand-painted, and they use her artwork on each one of those guitars as well. So. Awesome. Um, now, you said you use heavy strings. What gauges are you using? Uh, I go back and forth. Uh, right now, I'm going uh, 11, 14, 18, 28, 38, 58, and I use Ernie Ball strings, have used them forever. Uh, and then, you know, I'll bounce back and forth between uh, just like the plain steel strings or, or, or uh, the nickel-plated ones, you know, for a little darker tone. And, uh, you know, sometimes like in the studio or depending on the condition of my hands and how much I've been playing, I'll go a little heavier sometimes, like maybe a 12. Um, and then sometimes if I've been off for a while and you know, because when you play at home, it's not the same intensity as playing on the stage. So even when I'm just at home playing, it's not the same. So when I come back out, if my calluses aren't up to par, then I'll start off with tens and work my way back up. So what do you, what do you have here then? So this is one of the prototypes of my signature uh, Stratocaster. This was the one of the first ones that they built. And this actually has a different uh, pickup set up in it than what actually went into production because we were constantly experimenting with different sounds and windings and pole pieces and, and different heights and stuff like that and on this one you can see this one has the vintage finish which I actually went with the natural finish in production because I thought it was you know I just thought it was kind of a little bit fresher and you know and most people uh, most of the strats you see nowadays they always have this vintage finish on it but on this guitar in particular I think the natural finish went a little bit better with the with the color of the guitar and the uh, profile of the neck is slightly different on this one so this one's you know kind of a rare bird it's it's a one of a kind but it, it sounds really incredible even though these aren't the pickups that I uh, actually ended up going with uh, in my production version uh, this guitar just has a certain amount of vibe and mojo to it so I've continued to play it are there certain like songs or tones you go for with this one in particular? Well, this one just, uh, you know, uh, one of the things that I did when I first got this guitar, I was at the NAMM uh, convention, and I did a performance at the Fender booth, and uh, I had the guys from Double Trouble come out, and we did uh, Voodoo Child, and I played it on this guitar, and I've watched it back because they have it on YouTube, and uh, I just was like, man, I was really impressed with the tone of the guitar. So for those kind of things like uh, Hendrix stuff, or, you know, even if you want to go for, you know, a real kind of Stevie, early Stevie Ray Vaughan sound, this guitar is accomplishes that really well. So this is the uh, Monterey Pop Strat that uh, Fender put out a few years back. I think it was a little a while ago. Um, and you know they did a limited edition run of these guitars. Uh, they were all hand painted by this artist, this nice lady, and uh, I think she's in Southern California. Um, and you know it's basically a replica of the Strat that Jimi Hendrix burned at the Monterey Pop Festival. Um, one of the very cool things about this guitar when I got it is, is uh, I had Jay Black, who was one of the master builders at the Fender Custom Shop back in the 90s, 
I had him put build this neck for me with a reverse headstock on it. And uh, actually, the neck is is built to my specifications, but he, I wanted the backwards headstock to kind of give that Hendrix vibe to it. And it's funny because there's people that you know in the audience. They're obviously not guitar players but they come up to me after the show like man i didn't know you could play left-handed you know it's like it gives that uh, it kind of tricks some people uh it, you know it's a visual thing so anyways it's very cool this is number 151 of 210 and i've seen a lot of these guitars you know people uh you know have bought these and put them away uh all my guitars i get every single one of them gets played so you know whether it's rare valuable collectible I play it regardless, and this guitar has been kind of through hell and back, if you look at it, because uh, it's, you know, all the Hendrix stuff at the end of the show, uh, I used to get really crazy with my guitar, and I would, like, get down on the ground and throw it down and get on top of it, but you can see how many times we've had to replace the strap button there, and lots of uh, nicks and dings in it, and this thing we had to put some clear tape over just to preserve it because it was coming off. And uh, it's just been well used, you know, and I think some people would be appalled by that, at least the collectors would, because I've seen these things on eBay for like 17 grand, you know, uh, but to me, it's a workhorse, it's meant to be used. So this is another uh, version of my signature Strat, and it's the three-tone Sunburst, but this one's been modified. This is, I got a production model um, right off the production line, and I sent it to the people at Graph Tech, uh, and those are the guys that make the graphite saddles that I use. And uh, on this model, it has the original Graph Tech saddles like I have on my 61 Strat. Uh, but what we went for uh, with this guitar is we put their Ghost pickup system in it. So what that is, if you see the wires here, it's actually like a Piezo pickup that's inside of this electric guitar. And this switch right here, it, when it's down, then you've got just the single coil pickups. Uh, when you've got it in the middle position, it's the single coils and the Piezo, and when you flip it up to the top, it's just the acoustic sound. So, and this is a tone control, gives you a little bit of boost for the acoustic sound and allows you to manipulate the volume. This turns into a volume knob. Uh, but the point, the whole point behind this guitar for me was uh, songs like Blue on Black uh, that have an acoustic intro. And it would be, you know, kind of difficult for me to play the first verse uh, on uh, acoustic and then switch really fast to the electric when the electric kicks in. So this gives me the best of both worlds. So I can play the first, uh, the intro and the first verse entirely uh, with an acoustic sound. Uh, through my electric rig, and then uh, when the chorus comes in and I need the uh, electric sound, I just flip the switch and hit my pedals, and I've got the sound that I need. And it's really a, a great compromise in the best of both worlds. Nice. Cool. Yeah, so this is my Kenny Wayne Shepherd uh, signature Martin acoustic guitar. So they made these uh, in limited quantities back in, I believe, 2000. And it was a real honor. I remember when uh, they approached me about doing a signature acoustic I'd always wanted a Martin guitar, but I never actually was able to afford one because they, you know, they're like top shelf uh, guitars. And then, so the first Martin that I ever got was the one that they put my name on. And it was the very, I think it's the only blue Martin acoustic ever made, or at least at that point, uh, it was the first blue Martin acoustic ever made. And uh, it's just really beautiful. This one actually is the prototype. Um, so this one it has this beautiful blue finish, blue on black, just like the song, uh, has teardrops uh, for the fret markers. So the tears on a river, just like the lyric and the song, has my signature there, um, it has this beautiful uh, uh, black wood and the tuners, uh, you know, are made out of wood as well. And you look at the binding, it has beautiful blue binding on it. And this one is the prototype and you can tell that because it has this, uh, attached to the headstock, which they did on a lot of their early uh, Martin acoustics. Uh, a lot of the Vintage guitars have this, and it was kind of a signature Martin thing, a, a little detail that they did, and so I wanted it on my guitar, and they actually put it on the prototype, but they didn't put it on the production version. But it's a great sounding acoustic. Uh, we use it live, uh, and we also use it when we go in and do uh, uh, like acoustic performances on radio stations and stuff. This is called a National Resophonic. Uh, it's, it's like a Dobro electric guitar. I bought this years ago, and uh, like on my first tour, actually, uh, when my first album came out, we did a song, a Mississippi uh, Delta Blues song called Aberdeen. And in the studio, I was using like a combination of like a Dobro, uh, an old natural, uh, national, uh, big, like, hollow-bodied electric guitar, 
Uh, and I also use like a sitar, all three at the same time. And uh, so to try and, and emulate that sound live, uh, you know, a dobro, a mic dobro, that song gets very electric. Again, it's like the first verse is like an acoustic thing and then the band kicks in at full force. So I had to find uh, a compromise. I had to find the way to accomplish both of those things. And this guitar was the answer. So uh, it gets that national sound. It has the resonator built into the guitar, but also has a, a single coil pickup here here and you have the ability there's a pickup inside of the resonator and you have the ability to blend the sound of the two and it gets a really cool sound it gets that real you know like a national dobro sound uh, but again it's mic'd uh, you plug it into your your rig and it's coming through your amps and uh, you know it's kind of the easiest way to accomplish uh, what I was looking to accomplish. Excellent. You don't make it easy for yourself coming out on tour, do you? Yeah, you know, well, I like to try and get close, you know, as close as possible to the actual recordings, you know. It's like I don't want to pull off too many tricks in the studio to the point that we can't recreate right. it live, you know, because people want to hear that stuff. So we try and accommodate. For sure. Okay, this is an interesting guitar. This guitar I, I got uh, when I was in Europe the first time. I was on the road with the Eagles. Uh, I was like 17 or 18 years old. And I was doing all this press, and this guy scheduled an interview with me, uh, but he really was a guitar builder. And uh, he did the interview just so that he could give me this guitar. And he actually said that he had built it for Buddy Guy. The guy's name was Paul Guy, and so he calls them Guy Guitars. And I think he built this guitar for Buddy Guy, but he never had the opportunity to give it to him, so he decided he was going to give it to me <laughs> instead. Uh, so anyway, it's just really cool, and I was kind of moved by that. And I wouldn't accept it for free from him, uh, so I was like, no, man, i got to pay you for the guitar. And he was like, no, no money. And so I ended up giving him like a dollar, and he gave me the guitar. And it's cool. It's got these lipstick pickups in it, uh, and inside of it, it's got this uh, right here, this knob. This is an overdrive boost that's built into the tone control down here and it's built by Roger Mayer and I think it was a prototype and I don't know if it ever actually went into production but it's just a clean boost that it's, it's, it's almost like having an overdrive pedal built into your guitar. And uh, this thing also has like a drop D uh, thing yeah. here. So I used to use this on blue on black all the time and I would go straight from uh, regular tuning to drop D for the rhythm part which is necessary in that song. So this guitar uh, is a a modified Stevie Ray Vaughan signature Strat. And this is like the very first year production of those guitars. Um, so I had to modify it a little bit. You know, I put the Graf Tech saddles on it. Uh, we kept the Texas Special pickups in it because I think those are really great sounding pickups. I think Fender really knocked it out of the park when they made the Texas Special. Uh, but again, I had Jay Black build me a custom neck uh, on this guitar. Um, this is actually one of the very first necks that he built for me, and you can see that right here uh, where he indicates, uh, it says KWS SRV01, I believe. So this was the first neck that he built. Uh, beautiful bird's eye maple, uh, you know, uh, very uh, detailed neck. Uh, I always had him take the finish off of the backs of my guitars because it really just kind of frees me up makes it a little bit faster. All this gold paint that you see on the back of the guitar, when I was like um, 15 years old, uh, I was hanging out with Billy Gibbons and he drew all over the back of my guitar. And a lot of it got rubbed off over the years, but all this gold paint that you see left over, that's from Billy Gibbons. Wow. <laughs> and he drew a bunch of stuff on my guitar. Uh, but I don't really use this very much, but I like to keep it out. This is the guitar it's very sentimental guitar for me because uh, I got it like right after Stevie Ray passed. Everybody knows he was a big influence on me. Um, and I used it on uh, the better part of my first record. Um, and a lot of people have, you know, made comments about how they really liked the tone that I had on my first album. And 90% uh, of that record was this guitar here. So I just like to have it around, you know, because it has a lot of sentimental value. We're actually, you guys caught us in a, in, in, we're winding down. Uh, this is like the last week of dates for 2011 for us. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm experimenting with my rig right now to try and figure out what I want to put in place for next year when we hit the road again. So we've been kind of swapping amps uh, in and out, checking things out and different sounds. Uh, tonight, what I'm gonna be running through, we have three amplifiers here. And uh, the first one over here is the 1964 
Fender Blackface Vibroverb reissue. And, you know, originally they only made uh, the Blackface Vibroverb, I think, for like one year. Uh, and they had a brown Vibroverb and a black Vibroverb. And uh, the, both of those amps, I think, the total production uh, only spanned the course of about two years. So they're really rare amps, the original ones. So then they finally reissued uh, the Blackface Vibroverb. And I think they only did this for like a year as well so it's still a pretty rare amp it's all hand wired uh point to point hand wiring inside of the amp uh, no printed circuit board it has a built-in modification that was designed by caesar diaz that supposedly he had done on one of stevie ray vaughn's vibroverbs and they incorporated that into this amp and it also has a switch on the back where you can choose between a tube rectifier or a solid state uh, rectifier so uh it's a pretty versatile amp um, I've also been trying to bring the stage volume down uh, because, you know, everybody likes to play loud, but sooner or later, it's all fun and games till somebody's ears are bleeding, <laughs> you know? So uh, I'm experimenting with lower wattage amps because I used to run like 400 watt amps all cranked up, you know, and now we're trying to see what we can accomplish at half that volume. So now I'm, I'm experimenting with like 40, 45, and 50 watt amplifiers and sometimes even smaller, which you'll see in a minute. Uh, but this Vibroverb has a one, a single 15 inch speaker in it. It's a real unique sound. Most people, you know, uh, run 12s or 10s in their uh, guitar amps, but a 15 is a really unique sound. Gets a really great, uh, you know, bottom end for like, you know, that that low uh, 58, low E string that I have. So, what kind of a speaker is it? Uh, that's actually the factory speaker uh, that came with the amp from Fender. Uh, but I have some vintage JBL speakers that were an optional speaker that you could get on the original Vibroverbs back home that I'm actually going to swap out and put in here because I've heard. This amp sounds incredible just the way it is, but I've heard if you swap out that speaker with an original JBL, uh, I think the model is like a 130F, uh, a D130F, that they put in the original Vibroverbs, it'll sound dead on like an original. So that's a little project that we're going to be doing this uh, during the holiday break. Awesome. Yeah. So the other amp we have here, this is the Supersonic Twin. This is one of Fender's latest uh, creations. And uh, if you know much about me, uh, the majority of my career, I've been uh, a Fender Twin guy. I used to run uh, for several years. I just ran three Fender Twins wide open, you know. And they're huge sounding amps, but one of the greatest things about them is that they're very, very clean until you get them up to about, you know, eight, nine or ten, you know, uh, and then they start to break up. But they still never break up to the point of like real crazy distortion. And for me, I like a really nice, round, clean amp sound. And then I use I generally use my pedals to get the distortion. Um, but this is a really versatile amp. Uh, and I was interested. They piqued my interest because it was a supersonic twin. So obviously it has a twin circuit in it. It's a hundred watt amp. But it can do so many different things. It also has a basement circuit in it, so it's switchable. So you can make it sound like a twin, or you can make it sound like a Fender basement, although it's got two 12-inch speakers, so it would be like a Fender basement going through two 12s. Uh, then it also has a different channel with two different gain stages. Uh, it has uh, this thing they call notch uh, tune knob, which enables you to kind of you know, shape the curve uh, of the sound of the guitar. Uh, it's got a master volume control there, and it also has reverb built into it. On the back, you can switch the amp. It has like an arena setting and a club setting. So you can uh, put it on arena and run it at 100 watts, and I think the club setting steps it down to about 50 watts. And uh, it's got all kinds of bells and whistles, and uh, I think it's a pretty cool amp, and we've been using it out here and had great results with it. With all of that going on, how are you finding that you're using it for your sound box? Well, actually, what I've been doing is running the basement setting because, uh, to me, um, because I'm trying to bring the volume down, like, I like my amps to break up just a bit on the, uh, you know, on the rhythm pile, like a nice, round, clean sound, just slightly on the verge of breaking up. So I haven't found that I could get the sound in the twin setting exactly the way that I wanted it yet. So I went straight to the basement sound because a basement, you know, is like a 45 or 50 watt amp or something like that. And, you know, it sounds great, like, you know, right at the verge of breaking up. You, you know, it's a really dynamic amp and you can get everything from nice clean sounds to like really overdriven sounds. And you can do that with this amp as well. So I'm using it on the basement setting because I'm using it at half volume. It just sounds more appropriate like that to me. And I'm using it just on the verge of breaking up just like I said, and then I have my uh, pedals that are really just, you know, I'm using for the real overdrive sound and, and to get sustain and stuff like that out of the, out of the pedals. Sounds good. And the one on the end? 
So this right here, this is the secret weapon. Um, you know, by uh, if you just look at the amp, it looks like uh, a Fender Deluxe uh, reissue, and uh, actually, you know, the chassis and and the cabinet and all of that is it's a 1957 Deluxe reissue that they do at the at the custom shop, you know, and they're really great amps uh, from the custom shop as they are because um, they're all hand wired and and they're they put a lot of effort into these amps, but this particular amp uh, was built by Alexander Dumble. And uh, he opened up this amp, and uh, he completely gutted out the entire amp, and he, he rebuilt his own circuit into it. Um, I don't know anything about the circuit. Uh, I don't know what he did to it. I just know that the amp sounds absolutely incredible. He's got, I want to say it's putting out like 15 watts, like an honest 15 watts, or maybe it was 18. He gets more power out of these amps than they're actually... Uh, supposed to be capable of producing. Uh, we put a Celestion uh, greenback speaker in it and uh, you know I use Celestion speakers in just about all my amps and except for the ones that take 15 inch speakers. Um, but this amp just sounds incredible and so what we're doing is is I'm running these other two amps that are 45, 50 watts but I got this one going over here that we use and we just mix it. We just bring it right up into the mix enough to where it just kind of like puts the icing on the cake. And uh, this thing enables me to get all kinds of sustain. I mean, you wouldn't think that a watt, uh, an amp that, that's that quiet or that, you know, 15 watt amp would do much in comparison to two 50 watt amps side by side. But this thing, just adding that to the mix gives me an unbelievable amount of flexibility. It gives me all kinds of like sustain, overtones, undertones, just like there's nothing harsh about it. It's just like honestly the best thing that you could put on top of this rig right now. For those that are curious, it's called, uh, he calls it uh, Tweedledee Deluxe. Um, and uh, I use that and the Overdrive Special on a lot of songs in the studio. I, use the, I have some original Vibraverbs. Uh, blackface vibraverbs that I use in the studio. I have an original uh, 1958 basement as well. Uh, I have lots of vintage stuff. I use the 1957 Tweed Twin that the custom shop makes. It sounds incredible. I mean, just out of the box sounds awesome. So, you know, I probably, I don't know, I think I probably had about 15 to 20 amps in the studio and uh, I had, I don't know, close to 100 pedals and you know, just like mixing and matching yeah. and just having a good time. I mean, that's the time to do it is yeah, in the right. studio, you know. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the pedals that you've got on your board here. Okay, so uh, this is actually kind of my makeshift board for the time being. But I had a nice custom board built by this guy. Uh, his company's called Hellwig Pedal Boards. He's like, you know, there's boutique amp builders, and now there's like boutique pedal board builders that build these incredible pedal boards that are almost like furniture, you know, and so it's this really nice pedal board. It's got all this stuff and then a few extra things, but this is what I'm using right now until I get the new one in my possession. But uh, starting off in the signal chain, uh, we have the Dunlop Univibe reissue. Um, that is, uh, in particular, I use that for the rhythm sound on Blue on Black. Uh, you know, it just gets a really unique sound. It's very Hendrixy. Uh, you know, and some of the Hendrix stuff, uh, you know, I definitely use that as well. We put the tape on the knobs because um, the knobs are kind of hard to see, uh, you know, where, um, you know, what, le what level they're turned up to. I mean, because there's no, like, real, it's just like a, a dimple in each knob. So when you're on stage, it's hard to see where it is. And I found that they ca were constantly getting moved. So we just put tape all over them so that they will not get moved anymore. So uh, there's no, nothing secret going on there. It's just to keep the knobs from getting moved around. A sample of just the, uh, this, is, uh, this is the Dunlop Univibe. So that's what I use that for is like the rhythm part in blue on black. This is an electro harmonics POG 2. This is uh, an octave generator basically. And uh, you know, this thing gets all kinds of like trippy far out sounds. I'm using this on one song and it was uh, uh, our version of Your Blues, the Beatles song. And when you listen on the record, you can hear uh, the effect and uh, this is how we're doing it live as well so uh, you know you can dial it in these are not my settings uh, because what I actually did is I found the settings that I wanted and then you can store it as a preset in the pedal so don't pay any attention to the sliders because they're just 
they're, they're not important right now because I just have it set. There's a preset that I had dialed in, and that's basically what I do is I just switch that on. But it's cool. You can get everything from, like, an organ sound. I mean, I, when I first got this pedal, I was uh, messing around with it, and I was playing uh, some chords, and people were freaking out because it sounds just like an organ if you want it to. Uh, or you can just get a high octave or a low octave or a combination of that and your natural guitar sound. I have to use this... Uh, in conjunction with another pedal to get the sound that I want. So I throw the Pog on, which has this, it's really trippy sounding. So it has like a swell effect to it, but then when I kick on the overdrive over here, like the King of Tone, for example, it kind of helps accommodate for that and still maintains the right octaves. <laughs> Custom Audio Electronics Wah Pedal by Dunlop, and uh, I'm a big Dunlop user, have been for years basically, um, and this Wah Pedal I've been in search uh, for, you know, the best sounding Wah Pedal, and uh, I have an original Vox Clyde McCoy uh, Wah Pedal from the 60s, that's like the holy grail of Wah Pedals, everybody tries to emulate that, and uh, I've just been on the lookout for the one that sounds the closest, or sounds the closest to what I want a Wah to sound like, and this is it. It's got two different inductors in it, so it's switchable uh, with this uh, switch on the side, so you can choose between the two different inductors. It also has a built-in overdrive drive uh, which I don't use at all and then this knob at the top of it uh, is to control the amount of overdrive should you choose to use the built-in overdrive uh, but I basically use it on the yellow setting over here and uh, I find that it sounds great <laughs> It's got a nice sweep, you know, it's got, a, it's really vocal, um, you know, it's just really uh, sounds the way that I think a wah pedal should sound. Overdrive and really get crazy with it. <laughs> Chicago Iron. Tycho Bry Octavia reissue. Uh, I have an original Tycho Bry Octavia at home that I reserve just for studio use, um, but these guys uh, have really nailed the reissue. I mean, this is an accurate uh, of a reissue as any pedal I've ever seen. Uh, it sounds like the real thing. It basically is the real thing. And uh, I use that on songs. Uh, some of the Hendrix stuff, I use it on Blue on Black. I use it a few times uh, throughout the night. I found that I get the, the best sound. You can either use the pedal by itself or you can throw uh, like a tube screamer on top of it and just roll the tone back slightly. And the neck pickup is the best sounding pickup uh, with this pedal. So. <laughs> Analog Man King of Tone Pedal. Now this right here, if you want to know like the majority of my sound uh, throughout uh, the night, it's basically the sound of the amps and this King of Tone Pedal and the uh, Tube Screamer that we're going to get to in a minute. Uh, that's it. Everything else is just for like one or two songs here and there. Um, but this King of Tone pedal, I mean, when the guy named it King of Tone, he was not lying. I mean, this is one of the greatest overdrive pedals ever built. Analog Mike and I have been friends for a long time. I've worked with him on pedals for a long time. Uh, but he really knocked it out of the park with this pedal. It's got two independent overdrive circuits built into it. One is uh, a high gain. The left side is the high gain, and the right side is the low gain. Uh, you can modify them. Uh, he can modify them to be both high gain or both low gain. It also has a, a couple of dip switches inside 
side where you can manipulate the sound of it. So it's very versatile, uh, but it just sounds huge and really nice and fat and round. And uh, a lot of people stack pedals, you know, like you'll, they'll put on multiple overdrives or two or three pedals at a time to, to get the guitar and the rig to react the way you want it to. And I find that this pedal, uh, you know, using both channels at the same time, sometimes I'll use one for a rhythm sound. Sometimes I just use the amp for the rhythm sound. And then sometimes I'll kick both of them on at the same time for uh, overdrive. And then uh, sometimes I'll do both of these in a combination of another pedal uh, for a lead sound. But this thing is on 90% of the time in my show. This is the low gain uh, stage right here. So you can hear the difference between the natural sound of the amp. So I use that on like some rhythm parts that I need a little bit of extra kick. And then this is the high gain. But it's not too it's not too drastically different but when you combine the two it's like over the top awesome <laughs> Ibanez uh, Tube Screamer TS 808 HW, which this is the hand wired edition of the Tube Screamer. Some guys, uh, you know, think that there's not that much difference between that and, and the TS 808 reissue. Uh, this is all hand wired inside. I have A beat it personally with an original TS 808 that I have and one of the reissues, which I think the reissues are great pedals too. Uh, but this one honestly has a warmer sound to it. Uh, you know, I think hand wiring, there's something to be said for that. And this pedal definitely sounds a lot warmer while still retaining uh, that signature TS 808 uh, tube screamer sound. So I have found that in the chain of effects um, that sometimes I'll run the two uh, channels on the, on the King of Tone pedal and then I'll throw the TS-808 on top of it and it's, uh, it's an incredible combination. Because the, the Tube Screamer has a couple of tonal properties that the King of Tone doesn't have. So when you use the two together, it's almost, it's, it's like the best, it, it's got everything to it. It's got the fat low end, it's got the nice sparkly high ends, and it's got a really nice mid-range uh, capability. And when you run those two pedals together, I don't really know of a better combination, to be honest with you. So is the Tube Screamer not modified then? No, that's just straight from the factory. Uh, those guys uh, sent that to me and I put it in my board, I don't know, probably three, whenever they first came out with it, a couple of years ago, I think it was like three years ago, uh, I put it on my board and it's been there ever since. And uh, it has never broken. I've never had a problem with it. <laughs> to put all three of them on and just get really crazy. <laughs> What enables like those three pedals to sound like that and to get that kind of uh, feedback without it sounding harsh or shrill or you know getting out of key or anything like that is really that Tweedledee Deluxe by Dumble because if I took that out of the mix there'd be a whole different dynamic going on but with that thing on man it's just I can pick a note any note that I want and just hold it as long as I want it's pretty incredible <laughs> It's 
like it never gets offensive, you know, to the ear, which is, I mean, that's a challenge when you're running everything as hot as it can get up here. You know, a lot of times, man, you can, it can, it can get out of whack, you know, but it's a pretty great combination what we got going on right now. Next to that, we have the Analog Man bi -chorus pedal. So this is a, a really cool chorus pedal. It's one circuit, but uh, he has the ability uh, to have two independent settings. So what I use um, is I have one side set for like a fast setting, which gives you more like a, uh, you know, like a Leslie sound. And then I have a very slow setting on the other side of it, uh, you know, just kind of smooth some uh, things out and, and give a slight chorus effect. Not too much depth on it, just a little bit, just, just a hair, just so that you can hear the effect on there but it's not overwhelming the sound the natural sound of the rig um, and you know I use that on a few songs uh, it's really handy when we do like the slow version Voodoo Child Blues by Hendrix uh, it's a really handy pedal to use in that especially <laughs> And I don't like it to be too fast like um, a lot of like roto vibes and stuff like that they go real real fast and to me uh, I like it kind of like a medium speed setting you know <laughs> And it sounds really good when you throw an overdrive before it. And then I'll uh, then I'll turn on, you know, just like the slow setting for a really cool Hendrix thing. This is called the Delay Llama, and this is by a company called Jam Pedals, and they're a relatively new company uh, coming out of Europe, and uh, I met them when I was on the Experience Hendrix tour, and, uh, you know, they came out, and they, they let me demo this pedal and check it out, and I really loved it. It's an analog delay pedal, um, and what's cool about it is uh, it sounds like a real tape echo pedal to me, uh, but this little button right here on the left is like a hold switch, so... You know, you can hit something and then the, the, the delay happens, but you, the, as long as you have your foot on there, it will hold it like indefinitely. And so you can create all kinds of cool stacking sounds, get really psychedelic and trippy on it. And uh, they're actually making me a modified version because I want one that has a tap tempo switch on it. And then I actually would like for this switch to be an on off switch instead of having to keep my foot on there the whole time. So they're actually modifying one and developing it now. And I think they're going to bring it out to NAM for me uh, and I'm going to get to put it in the pedal board at that point but it's a really great sound of delay pedal and these guys they they hand paint all of their pedals and uh, they hand build all their pedals and it's really quality stuff it sounds like you know tape echo but not too random and then uh, you know you throw like a overdrive in front of it so that it really pushes the front end of the, of the delay pedal and then you hit that um, hold switch and, and it can be really fun <laughs> Um, next to that, we have, you know, just the Boss Tuner. I use that uh, to tune if necessary on stage, and I also use it as a mute switch. So uh, when I'm switching uh, guitars, instead of messing with the AB box, uh, I just hit the uh, tuner, and it kills the signal, and uh, everything's quiet while I'm switching out the guitars. And then we have the Voodoo Lab uh, pedal power that's, pa uh, that's powering everything uh, that's on the board. And, uh, you know, it's just good, man. You don't have to worry about switching out batteries anymore. And uh, it's been really reliable. I think I got that thing, like, in the, uh, in the 90s, and it, it's still going. Excellent. Yeah. Um, what are you using cable-wise to patch these? Well, this is an assortment. <laughs> 
So this is, like I said, this is like the makeshift board. So right. some of it is is whatever is whatever we had laying around, and then these are George L uh, cables, you know, that I made myself, and I ordered the kit from him, and I had them sent to my house, and just put them all together. They're solderless. Uh, you know, uh, cables and they have a great connection and they're pretty durable and reliable. And if you should ever have a problem with them, you can just cut the end off and, and make a new connection. And, and then we have some of the traditional ones, you know, we get those from Dunlop and, and Ernie Ball, they send them out and, uh, you know, we just, this, Grab bag right yeah, now. this is just a, uh, yeah, this is just kind of like uh, everything uh, but the kitchen sink kind of pedal board right here. We're using the new wi uh, wireless that line six put out. Uh, it's the G 90, I believe. And, uh, it's really cool, man. Uh, to be honest with you, I have been in search of a wireless that just did not destroy the sound of my guitar. You know, um, I've used everything. I've used, I've used. If they make a wireless, I have used it, and uh, I've always been dissatisfied to some degree. And you know, whether it made my my rig sound compressed. Uh, or whether it was dropping out too much or whatever. Um, this uh, Line 6 wireless sounds incredible. I mean, it sounds uh, just like you're plugged right into the amp with a cable. And for some people, I guess what the way that they describe it is, is is such a direct sound that it's as if you're plugged into your amp with a cable that's like this long. Uh, so there's actually no signal loss whatsoever. And for some people, um, they're not used to that direct of a sound because they have like a 30 foot cable and there's some tone loss that occurs when you have a long cable like that. So they actually have a button yeah. in the wireless where you can uh, uh, accommodate for that. So, you know, you can like specify if you want the sound of a 25 <laughs> foot cable or a 30 foot cable. Do you or, have that set? No, I have it set on just, you know, with... You, you want the two inch cable yeah, too, Yeah, right? I want the most <laughs> pure sound of my Absolutely. amp possible. And you know what? I mean, it, it really sounds... I've a beat it with the cable and with the wireless and I actually prefer the sound with the wireless and that's great because then there's no tripping over yeah, cables right. on stage. Sounds good. It sounds like you guys really take the time to dial everything in. Yeah, we try to, you know, and uh, the, the, the new pedal board has even more stuff on it. Um, because I found that, uh, you know, I'm doing a lot of tap dancing, you know, so I actually went and got Voodoo Labs pedal switching system and their, uh, what do they call it, the commander. So, you know, all my pedals are going to be basically in their own loops and we're going to be able to program it uh, however I want and assign, uh, you know, certain pedals to certain switches and I'll be able to hit one pe one button and three pedals will come on at the same time. So I'm looking forward to that as well. But yeah, it's, you know how it is. You're, if you're a guitar player, you're in the constant pursuit of the best tone you can find. And, and so for me, my rig is kind of an ever evolving sure. thing. Um, are there some pedals that are on the new board that you don't have out here that you wanted to talk yeah, about? Yeah, we've got, um, there's a BK Butler uh, tube driver pedal. Uh, which those are, you know, really cool pedals. Uh, the vintage ones are, you know, pretty collectible, but they just recently started remaking those. Um, everything that you see here is on there. Uh, and then there is also, uh, we took the insides of one of these wah pedals and mounted it underneath the board and attached it to a switch and it's set uh, at a, the pot is set at a particular setting uh, because on this song "Show Me the Way Back Home," I have I have a wah pedal engaged and I have it set, you know, at a certain position to get this sound, and then I have the tone control rolled all the way off uh, on my neck pickup, and then I'm like moving. To, so there's like all these things just to get that one sound. So rather than having to like mess around uh, with trying to get the wah in the right spot, we took the insides out of the wah, mounted it to the pedal hooked it up to a switch, so all I have to do is hit that switch and roll my tone knob back and I'm good to go. Nice. So there's some tricky stuff in there as well awesome. that nobody would even know about, but there's lots of good stuff and uh, lots of fun toys, you know. Cool. Well, it sounds like, you know, you're going to get the original 15 in, get the new pedal board out. Next year's going to be a fun tour for you. Yeah, absolutely, and there's going to be more amps too. Right now, uh, uh, Mr. Dumble is building a, he just rebuilt a vibroverb for me, an original wow. vibroverb, and then right now he's currently building a 59 baseman for me as well. So those are all going to come out on the road. Aren't you a lucky guy? I know. <laughs> so it's going to be, uh, 2012 is going to be a great year. Cool. Um, one final question. Uh, what kind of picks are you using? Uh, so these are just my signature picks that I have uh, with Dunlop, you know. So right now uh, it has my logo on the front. It's kind of hard to see because it's all white but they're really nice and uh, the perloid thing the the girls love them you know when you hand these out they really like they're so pretty but it has my signature on the back my logo on the front and uh dunlop makes them what's the thickness 
Uh, these are heavy because, uh, you know, I'm using heavy strings. So anything I've found, I play really hard. Uh, I'm very physical with the instrument, um, almost like beat the guitar into submission. So what I've found is that if anything lighter than a heavy on my electric guitars, and I just slice right through it. I mean, you give me a medium pick, and after two songs, the pick will just be cut in half. This is Rebecca Dirks for PremierGuitar.com.